QE, QE1, QE2, QE2. And I mean, you just went on and on all the way through COVID with printing money and lowering rates. I do think, Tom, it does, because because what you're seeing is essentially is the Fed is trying to lead this push and they're talking so aggressively hawkish. Now, I believe it's a lot of talk. I, I'm curious once we tick into recession, how quickly they back off from this hawkish talk. But I think they're trying to talk a tough game to make sure that inflation kind of stalls out here and does come in. But I do think raising raising rates sucks money out of the system. Right. So just like printing and lowering rates drives money into the system, it makes money free or at least cheap the opposite is occurring. So it's a supply demand economics problem where when you take dollars out of the system, inevitably the dollar should strengthen. And especially since we're acting more aggressively than the ECB or the Japanese central bank, it's going to strengthen the dollar against those currencies. Mm -hmm. I, now, I'd actually, like to... Sorry, I was just going to say something. If I could just show a chart here for you guys, because I actually think that, you know, we just talked about, I just mentioned Japan, and I actually have a chart that dictates that I think we have a short-term high on the US dollar yen chart. And I think it's really helpful to take a look at. So let's take a look at this. Take a look at this channel. So this again, beautiful trend line from this high going back to 2022, uh, early 2022 here, here, and look at the yen, what it just did today and how it's reversing. So these are the things that as a technician, I kind of watch for. And this, by the way, this doesn't mean that the, the yen is all of a sudden going to be strong and just continue to rally against the dollar. But what it tells me is in the short term, the dollar may be topping out and due for a pullback. So again, if you're looking over the next couple of weeks, I would expect further dollar weakness. And then this chart should come in and pull back, maybe down to this lower level. We'll have to watch and see. But but those are just some cool stuff I love looking at. Yeah, so the euro chart is an interesting one. And, and again, it's a little bit on the harder side to, to figure out in terms of the highs. I'm, and I'm looking at this relatively fresh, but this would be something that I would pay attention to. You have this angle where you were chopping along this trend line here, and it looks like we're kissing the low end of that after a very big move to the downside. You can see we, we had small bounces on the on the euro here, but for the most part versus the dollar, the, the dollar's just been dominating the euro. And again, what's interesting here is this down move is coinciding with a, excuse me, this potential bounce in the euro against the dollar is potentially coinciding with natural gas prices starting to fall. This is another really interesting thing. We know that that Russia shut off that pipeline to Europe. Everyone was panicking over the weekend. And then what you saw is natural gas started to fall even in spite of that news. And one of the things I look at, and we can go to the natural gas chart here, one of the things I follow very closely as a trader is that when you have bullish news and an asset falls, or if you have bearish news and an asset rises, that does get my attention. It's telling you mm -hmm. something as inner workings is going against the common kind of thought process. And so look at the fall in natural gas just over the last, let's say, three or four trading days. That's a big fall. And it tells me that the euro, if this pressure from Russia maybe doesn't turn out to be as crazy, as, as bad as everyone's talking about, maybe that's the reasoning why we're seeing natural gas fall and could be the culprit for a euro bounce against the dollar. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And again, it's it's hard to know how much. I don't know longer term. It's very hard to predict the longer term <laughs> movements like in five years, three years from now. But in the very least, you have to look at the euro and say it's due for a technical bounce. I would just pinpoint this level. Let me show my chart. So, so a couple levels that I would pinpoint as resistance if the euro starts to bounce. Um, this one would be one of them. You can see these pivot lows right through here and then just above that. So I think you could get a bounce on the euro, but it probably would run into major resistance around 105 to 106 mm -hmm. on the euro against the dollar. Yeah, I, I think I think part of it is the psychology of the market. So one of the key components of a technical trader is looking at the mental state of investors who are who are massively investing in a market. And what we saw was kind of this culmination of fear from Friday when that news hit. We saw the stock market really sell off sharply when the pipeline was announced that it was going to be fully shut off. And over the weekend, all of that fear kind of stewed with a three day weekend here in the US. So it kind of created this like max pain level where you inevitably get a reversal 
reversion or, or reversal off of this kind of level. Then you throw in the, these trend lines that we showed, whether it's the Japanese versus the, de- the yen versus the dollar or the euro versus the dollar here, and you start to think, okay, this could at least be a short-term pivot point um, on the charts. And I think, again, just looking at the dollar chart, the Dixie, you've had so much major upside in the charts on the dollar that it's due for that kind of relief pullback. It's it's just been pushed too hard too fast. No, for sure they don't. They don't. The 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 bond market and again bond market is the biggest market out there, known as the smartest money. And interestingly enough, we've been seeing and and this is something I noted after Jackson Hole, the stock market freaked out, right? Everyone's like, "Oh my goodness, Jerome Powell's so ridiculously hawkish." And then what do I do? I go to the facts. I go to the charts, right? So what I did was I said, "Okay, well, if, if he's super hawkish, the most he's ever been, shouldn't the 10 year yield be making new highs? And the answer is I went to the chart and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, he made these comments over here and we've gone up a little bit since then, but you're not even back to the June highs of 3.5% on the 10 year. So to me, that tells me that smart money is saying, hey, Jerome Powell, the economy is gonna weaken enough over the next few months where you're not gonna hike as much as everyone's anticipating and therefore the 10 year, at least as of now, is telling us that it has not made a new high. It is calling the bluff of Jerome Powell. Yeah, for sure. You know, so so it's it's a weird time right now because you're coming off of the COVID lockdowns and stuff like that. And then obviously there's there was the surge and then kind of the reflex retraction there. So I think it's it's one of the most hard times to really figure out what is a recession, what isn't. For me, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the jobs numbers. You start to see a, a significant uptick in unemployment. Um, we did see a tiny uptick in unemployment uh, last Friday, but it was mostly due to people coming back to the workforce. I think that over the next few months, you're going to see that unemployment rise to 4%, a little bit above. And then once we see G- the GDP numbers remain weak plus that, then it's like, okay, this is a no-brainer official recession that that you you could call it that at that point. I do. I really do. I, I mean, I have it penciled in for a 50 basis point um, at the end of September hike. So again, for me, now there's a lot of talk and the markets are even saying it could be 75 basis points. I'm thinking the Fed is, at least I hope they're smart enough to understand that they can't and it's very dangerous to continue aggressively hiking rates. Because again, each rate hike takes a certain amount of time to work its way through the economy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you hike three times in a row, 75 basis points, and then all of a sudden in six months, we're in a deep recession, ask yourself, how do we get out of that recession? Because every past recession, the Fed has come to the market's rescue. QE, QE1, QE2, QE2, and I mean, you just went on and on all the way through COVID with printing money and lowering rates. And so the Fed can't do that anymore with inflation as high as it is. So I really hope they're careful. I think that they're starting to see those signs of weakness creeping in like they want the inflation numbers coming down. And I think that that would be the goal here to start that. They can always do 50 again later in the year if they want to, but starting to just bring it down a notch would be a very confidence boosting thing for the economy and for the markets. That's what I think. I think in the near term, that's going to be kind of like a breath of a sigh of relief, if you will, where they're okay, they're on their downward shift. Now they may still do another 50 that the next meeting, maybe 25, whatever it is, but they're starting to kind of come down the mountaintop, you know, this way at that point. And I think in the near term, that is a positive for risk assets. My, my thinking of and why I'm net longer term bearish is that I do see us going into a recession, even if they start kind of coming down on the hikes less and less, we're still headed into a full-fledged recession. And again, I think once the market realizes the Fed can't bail us out of this recession, the market's gonna freak out. It's gonna say, okay, this could be a long drawn out recession making up for all the lack of recessions that we've seen over the past 10 plus years. And that could be this kind of stagflationary kind of period in the markets. And I think that's the culprit for the next big leg down that takes us down to the COVID, the pre-COVID low uh, highs from 2020 and even below.